Thank you. So for the past uh, five days, I think uh, we are discussing about this book called Third Eye. Uh, so, so far we have discussed, what did we discuss? Uh, we had this uh, old zoo who is an, a caretaker of uh, Lopsang Rampa, who is four years old. And then, so his uh, pony was, uh, what was his pony's name? Nakim. And uh, uh, Lopsang Rampa did not like riding ponies. Um, then what did we discuss? So now um, so we also looked about his school and about his home, how it is, what is his structure, um, who, like, um, who do they live, and what else we did, did we discuss? And about the at school, we also looked about their physical activities, which was so interesting for all of us, like kite playing, um, still talking. Pole, pole jumping, all these kind of things. And then now, uh, so Lopsang Rampa now turned uh, to six years and he's about to turn seven. So before turning seven, so they have this kind of um, uh, procession where they will predict the future of what Lopsang Rampa would be, would be when he become old. So everything in Tibet would work based on this astrology. Even if they want to buy a yak, they would look at the astrology, it seems. So this is all happening 100 years back. So just uh, we need to uh, think that this is all happening 100 years. We need to visualize, OK, this was 100 years back. And now, so so because of this, uh, what is this? There's, um, they were going to predict the future of Lopes and Rampa. So that is a big procession. Uh, so. Uh, it's a big procession, so it's like a big thing for their parents. But uh, Lopsang Rampa did not like it. He did not like it. He, he's feeling unpleasant. Uh, so, and now, so so it's like now we are seeing like okay, now people. So they went to a church cathedral, uh, cathedral like a temple, a religious uh, place, and then from there they are again back to the back to their home. And now all the guests started coming to their home. So now let's see from there. So we started uh, looking like uh, the exchange of scarves. So uh, how in our places, if someone guest comes, if like people more popular um, with high noble rank people, so we would uh, welcome them with the garland and uh, so on. So here they would welcome them with scarves. Uh, they also call it as kata. Okay. So this is uh, this is what happened and now all the guests are coming 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 in and there are many women also who came in uh, they were coming on the horse horses also so they were wearing those kind of masks to prevent a kind of harsh wind so for the women uh, so from so till that i think uh, we have seen and we also looked at uh, Esho, her sister his sister was well dressed but the Lopsang Rampa did not like the style which his sister wa was braided his plait on, or like the way she was, uh, um, she was uh, decorated. She was um, uh, decorated, or like, um, yeah, we can say that. So with this, let me just share the, my screen so that you can all look, so that we can. Uh, Joshua, can you please um, make me co-host, please? Thank you. Uh, let me know if you guys can see my screen. Give me a thumbs up if you can see it. Good, thank you. Thank you all. Okay. So tell that, like, so we have seen that. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, Esho's was his style. Esho's style was terrible. That's what we have discussed. Okay, from there, we will see how it goes. There was another set of women to complicate matters. 
the high class women in Tibet was expected to have huge stores of clothing and ample jewels. So they like um, the high class women, they would like to have like they will have stores of means lot of clothes, lot of jewels with them. These she had to display and as this would have entitled much changing and dressing special girls, chung girls were employed to act as mannequins. So there were mannequins. I mean, these girls would act as mannequins. They will wear their mother's dress because they want to show off their, their um, her, uh, his mother's dress and jewelry. So these girls will be hired. They will wear their mother's dress and jewels so that everyone can say, okay, oh, okay, mom, mom has these kind of claws, these kind of jewels, something like that to show off. Okay, like mannequins, mannequins means we all know like uh, uh, dolls which we see in uh, uh, shops where we can wear, make, uh, where they'll wear the clothes and uh, it's an, uh, a fake dolls, right? Like the dummy figures in the shop window, th that those are called as mannequins. They paraded around in mother's clothes, sat and drank innumerable cups of butter tea and then went and changed into different clothing and jewelry. So they used to, uh, that's what I've told you, right? Like these girls, they would uh, wear her mother's clothes, uh, song Rampa's mother's clothes and uh, go and talk to people and drink some tree along with them and keep changing the dresses. They mixed with the guests and became to all intents and purposes, mother's assistant hostesses. Because there are so many people, so only one, her, his mother can't go and uh, keep, talking everyone at the same time isn't it so that's the reason they she has hired these these uh, girls where they can go and talk to the people um the different people when his when her mother is talking to few people so like everyone are being respected and they are uh, um yeah that is kind of respect they are giving throughout the day these women would change their attire perhaps five or six times so five or six times they need to change the dresses and wear different kind of dresses of their mother dresses to show to show off what what his mother had for the people that was a tradition in tibet the men were more interested in the entertainers in the gardens it a troop of acrobats um men's acrobats like like uh, they are gymnastic people uh, who would perform so the troop of acrobats had been brought in to add a touch of fun three of them so they're like the gymnastic people so what they we will we can see those people like kind of circles kind of people okay uh, three of them held up a pole about 15 feet high and another ac acrobat climbed up and stood on his head on the top okay so this is these are the kind of uh, games that they were playing playing so that the the uh, guests can be entertained so then the other snatched away the pole, leaving him to fall, turn and land cat-like on his feet. So these are all the gymnastic performances so that uh, they are performing. Some small boys were watching and immediately rushed away to a secluded spot, I mean, so a isolated spot to emulate the performance. Emulate is like some uh, copy. So there were few boys, they would go to a uh, separate place where no one other than they would perform the same performance. They would copy the performance, what they were doing. They, fo they found a pole about eight or 10 feet high, held it up and the people were walking about, admiring the gardens, are sitting in the most daring, climbed up and tried to stand on his head. Down the groups discussing social affairs, the ladies in particular were busy, came with an awful crumb straight on top of the others. However, their heads were thick and apart from excise bruises, no harm was done. So all these are all the circus tricks they were doing. That's what so far it was done. Mother appeared leading the rest of the ladies to see the entertainments and listen to the music. So now his mother has come to see what is, how the entertainment is going on, how the music is later was not difficult the musicians were now well warmed up with the copious amounts of tibetan beer so he's telling me like now the musicians are are well warmed up they are very good they are singing very well for this occasion mother was particularly well dressed so for this uh, occasion what is occasion the they're going to predict the future of 
flop sang rampa what what is he going to become from so that like if if they predate accordingly they will train him that is the motto behind this she was wearing a yak um, so his mother she was wearing a yak wool skirt of deep russet red reaching almost to the ankles okay so she is his mother is wearing a, a red color skirt till the ankles her high boots of tibetan felt were of the purest white with blood reds red soles and tastefully arranged red piping so it's now they are talking about her boots her bolero type jacket was of reddish yellow somewhat like father's monk robe so she is uh, his, his mother is wearing a, wearing a jacket on top of the robe it's a kind of yellowish reddish yellow color in my later medical days i should have described it as iodine or an bandage so he is making fun look okay. at that particular color is similar that he is comparing to the iodine an bandage so we'll see what is it in medical days i'll I'll, uh, I'll not reveal the suspense so far okay beneath beneath it she wore a blouse of purple skill silk uh, she was also uh, wearing a blouse uh, which is of a purple color it is made of silk these colors all harmonized and had been chosen to represent the different classes of monk monks garments so these are all chose chose so that uh, it represents the monks in tibet they have the monks right so uh, to represent those different classes we have different classes of monks so to represent that so these colors have been chosen for her mother's attire for the particular occasion across her right shoulder was a silk brocade sash which was caught at the left of her waist by a massive gold circlet so at her waist she was wearing a gold uh, circlet gold chain at the at her um, waist from the shoulder to the waist not the sash was blood red but from the point it shaded from pale lemon yellow to deep saffron when it reached the skirt skirt it's like they are telling he is they are describing the color of the attire of what is mom wearing from blood red and then slowly the dress is uh, going from you know, it's shading to yellow lemon to deep saffron uh, okay that is a color which is describing yeah, this is all about the attire what is mom wearing that day now so it, it's still about now we discuss about the watch his mom is wearing now then he is going to describe about the jewels around her neck she had a gold cord which supported the three amulet bags which she always wore so she had um this is like ornaments amulet bag or amulet bags means ornaments she had three uh, bags uh, kind of uh, ornaments it seems these had been given to her on her marriage to father one was her family so during the marriage these she was wearing three let us say like three three chains uh, so one was uh, it was given to a marriage one was from her family so one was given one chain was from mother's family one from father's family and one an unusual honor was from dalai lama so she also got one chain from dalai lama as an honor she wore much jewelry because because tibetan women wear jewelry and ornaments in accordance with their station in life so it's like in tibet uh, uh, women normally wear lot of jewelry it represents his status in um, in society so a husband is expected to buy ornaments and jewelry whenever he has rise in status so if his uh, husband got promoted in his job or some in something so then it is a duty of his husband of a husband to buy more ornaments so that it is a status it is a status so so this is this is status so in tibet it was in 100 years back this is this is how their life was okay mother had been busy for days past having her hair arranged in a 108 plaits each about as thick as a piece of whip cord so his um hair mother's hair she was busy like they would plate i mean like uh, braid the braid her hair like uh, like they would take few of the hair and they would make a plait and again the few of the hair they'll make a plait so it's like a 108 plaits okay 
what a hundred and eight is a tibetan sacred number it's a sacred number it seems the one one hundred and eight and ladies with sufficient hair to make this number of plates were considered to be more fortunate because if the uh, the to get this number of one hundred and eight braids of uh, braids so they need sufficient hair also if they don't have enough hair they can't do uh, only they can do few numbers so his mother is lucky that is why he's telling they were able to make one hundred and eight uh, braids plaits. The hair parted in the Madonna style was supported on a wooden framework worn on top of the head like a hat. So they did some kind of style where they, it was uh, for the style, they would use some kind of wooden framework on the top of the head. It's like kind of hat where uh, they would use it for, um, for, for the hair to support the hair. Of red lacquered wood, it was studded with diamonds, jade and gold discs. The hair trailed over it like a rambler roses on a trellis. So it's like they're telling like um, the uh, like rose plants. The hairs are going like um, uh, extending their uh, stems or branches into this uh, um, into, into the ground, right? That is how the hair is also uh, uh, going into this uh, wooden thing. Uh, that is what he's telling. It's um, it's following following the wooden um, on uh, wooden ornament. Okay. Mother had a string of, that is what till till now about his hair, about his hair. So we have seen about mother's uh, dress. Now we have seen how his mother's hair was. Now we are going for this and about their few jewelry. Now we are going for his mother's earrings. See, let's see what is happening. Mother had a string of coral shapes depending from her ear. The weight was so great that she had to use a red thread around the ear to support it, a risk as having the lobe torn. So he's telling like her mother used to wear a very heavy earrings. Uh, how, let's see how much, like how big it is. The earring reached nearly to her waist. Normally we wear, it's a till girls wear like the earrings, like till here or here or till here, okay? But his, her mom used to wear from here till her waist. So how big the earrings and how much weight it would be, right? So for to support those uh, earrings in order to uh, to avoid the lobe turn, lobe turn is like here, um, this is for lobe, so to avoid the damage to the lobe. So they, were, they used to have some kind of thread to the earring so that to support it, okay? People were walking about admiring the gardens. Now, uh, this is up to, till now we have discussed about mother's attire. Now, people, we are going to this gardens people were walking about admiring the gardens or sitting in the groups discussing social affairs the ladies in particular were busy with their talk so uh, people in gardens men, men were discussing about uh, the politics and those things and about what is happening in the community blah 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 the ladies in particular were busy with their talk yes my idea lady doring is having a new floor light it's normally how ladies will talk about gossiping about um other other houses about uh, what is happening in their lives that is what finally grew ground pebbles polished a high gloss have you heard that the young lama who was staying with lady rakasha something like it's that are uh, talking about some other lady etc so that is what gossip is but everyone was really waiting for the main item of the day all this was a mere warming up for the events to come and when the priest astrologers would forecast my future and direct the path I should take through life. Upon them depended the career I should undertake. But Lopsang Rampa, what did he wish for? What did he wanted to become? Anyone can say? Yeah, please unmute and say. Um, He wanted to become a kite flyer. Yeah, well done Mukran. Uh, I'll give the next chance to Aradhan, okay? Um, so for now, let's go, proceed. Upon them depended the career and I should undertake. As the day grew old and the lengthening shadows crawled more quickly across the ground and the activities of guests became slower. They're telling, so now it is becoming evening. That is what it means. They were satiated with refreshments and in a receptive mode. So now they're all filled with refreshments, what they were given. As the piles of food grew less, 
entire servants brought more and that too went with the passage of time so the the servants are bringing lot and lot of food and the guests who are come there to attend they, they were they were eating more talking and slowly the those piles of food are as the time goes it is all getting empty so the servants are coming and refilling it again the hired entertainers grew very means uh, they were, the entertainers are also becoming exhausted because from morning it's going on one by one slipped away to the kitchens for a rest and more there so they were they're also going to the kitchen so they wanted some rest the entertainers also because they are getting very tired the musicians were still in fine fettle um uh, the musicians were still in fine fettle means they're still musicians are okay they are they are still um having that kind of uh, good health they're in still good health blowing the trumpets clashing the cymbals talking the drums with the gay abandon so there's really like the uh, musicians are uh, are doing uh, are are enjoying with uh, all these uh, drums and trumpets with all the nice noise and uproar the birds had been scared from their usual roosting places in the trees that's true right like because uh, these trumpets and these uh, drums they would cause lot of sound and because of this the birds are very scared and they are moved from their nestle uh places settling places from the trees and not only birds were scared the cats have dived precipitately into some safe refuge with the arrival of the first noisy guests so the cats also they also moved from and rushed so suddenly into a well where there is a safe place they could feel they would they all um so drifted away from that particular uh, even place even the huge black mastiffs means uh, uh, these are a huge black dogs okay mastiffs a kind of a breed um which got at the place were silent their deep baying stilled in the sleep um means like a, a, so these uh, dogs are also they are not barking anymore they had been fed and fed until they could eat no more they really like you know the dogs are fed fed so much so that they are, they can't even take any more in the walled gardens as the day grew yet darker so it's now now getting darker small boys flitted like gnomes between the cultivated trees swinging lighted butter lamps and smoke incense censers and at times sleeping into the lower branches of care free frolic um so they are telling like uh, now these uh, boys are now, um, like uh, playing uh, mischievously from uh, using uh, touching the butter lamps which they are not supposed to so they are playing like elves that's what they he means like no gnomes means uh, okay D dotted about the grounds were golden incense braziers sending up their thick columns of fragrant smoke so up um, from the gardens there were this uh, incense braziers means like uh, where it can uh, uh, hold the incense uh, it's kind of metal kind of thing where it can hold this incense sticks attending them were old women who also twirl clacking prayer wheels e uh, each revolution of which sent thousands of prayers heavenward so all is happening like uh, some women old women are sitting and praying and they have some kind of wheel where they can uh, ch chant their uh, prayers and their kind of a uh, um, kind of um, a prayer wheel means like they'll have some kind of a uh, um bells around it and when they uh, they, uh, they when they keep doing it they will have that they'll keep telling their prayers this is all happening father was in a state of perpetual fright so his father is is uh, having like i mean his his fear, his fear, um he's in an uh, um, never ending shock kind of thing okay when is it going to happen what is uh, what is my son's uh, future is going to be that is what he is all about his thinking he is very frightful he is very nervous his um, walled gardens were famous throughout the country for their expensive imported plants and shrubs so whatever the gardens which they have lopsang rappers uh, at, at their home they so it's like um, they are very famous because they are very expensive it seems about the plants and shrubs which they are there in their garden now to his way of thinking the place was like a badly run zoo So it's like people are so many people are there. So it's like he's not feeling too good. He wandered around, bringing his hands, and uttering little moans of anguish. When some guest stopped and fingered a bud, 
So he has, he is bringing bringing his hands, means twisting his hands and going around, uh, and he is expressing some kind of uh, uh, like that kind of like in terms of uh, nervousness. Okay, and uh, when uh, when someone has, uh, talk about something about the garden, in particular danger were the apricot, and uh, there were these kind of trees they are saying were the apricot and pear pear trees and the little dwarf apple trees. The larger and taller trees, popular willow, juniper, birch, cypress, were festooned with um, streams of prayer flags, which fluttered gently in the soft evening breeze. Um, I mean, so here they're selling like all the trees festoons means they are decorated with the prayer flags, and all these flags are wavering because of this um, waving in the wind because of the wind okay in the soft breeze eventually the day died means the sunset eventually the day died as the sun set behind the far distant peaks of the himalayas from the lamasaris came the sound of trumpets signaling the passing of yet another day so they were normally with your during the like once the sunset is there sunset has come uh, from the Lama series, it's a, a spiritual committee where they would uh, uh, blow the trumpets so that, okay, this day has come to an end. It's a signal. And with it, the hundreds of butter lamps were set alight. So all these la lamps were alight so that people can, uh, we need light, right? So because there are so many people at the home for this party. They depended from the branches of trees. They swung from the projecting eaves. Um, uh, eaves means like kind of uh, uh, under, uh, under a roof which is uh, extended beyond these walls. So it's like kind of uh, a roof, um, covered covered path, okay. Yes. Projecting eaves of the houses and others. So he's telling like about the butter lamps, where are they? I mean, they're hanging uh, there at the particular of uh, on the trees or under the roof of a, a wall um, and they're also floated on the placid waters of the ornamental lake they're also in the lake here they grounded like boats on sandbar and the water lily leaves they they drifted towards the floating swan seeking refuge near refuge near the island so all this uh, uh, the uh, the butter lamp which were on the uh, on the lake they all moved towards this uh, swans where the swans were taking were settled that is what he is he meant this is about the butter lamp now the sound of a deep toned gong and everyone turned to watch the approaching procession so the, now the procession is coming in the gardens a large marquee had been erected Macu means um, it's a, it's a large macu means it's a tent kind of thing being erected with with one completely open side. So the tent it has one side open and remaining side is covered with a cloth. Inside was a raised dais on which were four of our Tibetan seats. So there was little kind of dais means um, it's like a platform where it is raised uh, for a, and there were four uh, Tibetan seats. Now the procession approached the dais. Four servants carried upright poles with the large flares at the up end. So they are uh, the poles they're holding and the flares means because it is acting as a light for them to travel. Uh, the poles having the flares. Then came four trumpets with silver trumpets sounding a fanfare. Following the mother and father reached the dais and stepped upon it. Then two old men, very old men, from the lamasery of the state oracle. These two old men were very old men from the lamasery of the state oracle. So these two old men from Nechung were the most experienced astrologers in the country. They are the most experienced person, uh, people. These predict their predictions have been proved correct time after time. So whatever they have predicted for so far has been hundred percent spot on. Last week they had been called to predict for the Dalai Lama. So they're also ca called Dalai Lama is like the kind of a pre pre prime minister. So we know uh, that prime ministers keep changing, but 
whoever come into that role, they have to act as a prime minister. Prime minister. So that is how Dalai Lama is also a post. So that particular Dalai Lama, that that a. Um, so they also predicted the future of the that particular Dalai Lama. Now they were going to do the same for a seven-year-old boy. So so they, he's telling like uh, they have also predicted the Dalai Lama's uh, future. Now the same people are going to predict the seven-year-old boy future. For days they had been busy at the chats, at the computations, long had the discussions about trines, ecliptics, sequent. Uh, Sesequi quadrates and opposing influence of this or that. I will discuss astrology in a later chapter. So it's telling like this is all comes under astro astrology. They will look about so many things. Uh, what is this? What is the birth time and that birth day and so many different things will be there when they predict the future. Okay, there. So two lama carried the astrology astrologers notes and charts two others step forward and help the old seeds to mount the steps of the rest because there's very old people so they are some other two other people they um, they help the uh, the old people to climb the dais thus climb the on the platform side by side they, they they stood these two old people they stood side by side like two old ivory carvings and then like he's comparing like it's like uh, so beautiful carvings kind of thing. He'd be comparing these uh, two old men. Their gorgeous robes of yellow Chinese brocade merely emphasize their age. He's telling them the robes means robes that kind of dress like a one single uh, a kind of dress will be there or no? so it will be running from a shoulder to the ankles so it is called robes so it is of um, yellow yellow color so and it is um, actually uh, emphasizing means it is actually um, it is um, influencing their age um, upon their heads they wore tall priest has under uh, so what did I say? Yeah, these Chinese, these yellow Chinese uh, ropes were uh, merely emphasized their age. So it's like, uh, it's um, it's like highlighting their age. Upon their heads, they wore tall priest hats, and their wrinkled necks seemed to wilt. Uh, be, uh, uh, wilt means uh, like uh, to sink. Because of their weight, their, their neck was sinked beneath the weight. People gathered around and sat on the ground on cushions brought by the servants. All gossip stopped. As people strained their ears, oh, what's what that they're going to hear? So they will see, right? We will uh, give our ears to listen what is going to happen. So the ears to catch the shrill piping voice of the astrologers in chief. La Dri Mi Chanang Ching, he said, gods devils and men all behave in the same way so the probable future can be foretold on he droned means uh, he started humming for an hour and then stopped for 10 minute rest for yet another hour hour he went on outlining the future hale hale extraordinary extraordinary exclaimed the entrance audience and so it was foretold so now it's uh, now the surprise is going to what we will see what is the surprise okay what what is he going to become a boy of seven to enter enter a lamasari after a hard feat of endurance means after a hard feat of um, a patience and there be trained as a priest surgeon he is going to become a, a priest surgeon so he has to go to the lamasari as he has to become a monk now. So to suffer great hardships, to leave the home, homeland, he will has to suffer many kind of uh, difficulties and he has to leave his homeland, means his house and his area and uh, and go among strange people. He has to go among strange people, means unknown people, to lose all and have to start again and eventually to succeed. But finally he will succeed. So it's like his life is like, it's a kind of um, so much of responsibility, we could say, with so much of uh, um, responsible um, uh, goals, like that is what now they have detected that his, predict his future is predicted, he's going to be a, a priest surgeon, means a kind of surgeon, kind of doctor, gradually the crowd dispersed. 
those who had come from afar would stay the night at our house and depart in the morning. Others would travel with their retinues and with flays to light the way. With much clattering of hooves and the hoarse shouts of men, they assembled in the courtyard. So Nidhi is telling like the people who are nearby, they, they started uh, leaving on their horses and people who are uh, far, who came from far away, they stayed in, the, in our house for that night. Once again, the ponderous gate swung open and the company streamed through. Growing fainter in the distance was the clock clop of the horses and the chatter of their riders until from without there was a silence of the night. So now chapter three, last days at home. Oh, poor love Sanampa. Let's see, well, last days at home. Why? Let's see why, why it is last days at home. Because why, why? He's, he wants to go to Lamasari, right? He has to become a priest surgeon. So he has to leave his home. Inside the house, there was still much activity. He was still being consumed in huge quantities. I think Tibet is um, famous. Uh, I mean, they consume a lot of tea. And food was disappearing at last minute. Revelers. Rivalas means partiers, I mean, who attend the party, fortified themselves against the coming night. So uh, this food, like uh, the food was coming and the food, all this food was disappearing because still the party is the people are eating the food. All the rooms were occupied and there was no room for me. There was no room for Loksa Rampar only. This consolately, I wandered around ideally kicking at stones and anything else in the way. But even that did not bring inspiration. He's telling even kicking the stones and wandering around here and there, it did not bring me any kind of uh, inspiration. No one took any notice of me. He's a little sad because no one are, uh, this function is all about him, but no one are bothering about him. The guests were tired and happy. The servants were, were tired and irritable because why are they irritable? Because they're cooking, serving people so long. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. And the horses had more feeling. I grumbled to myself. So he's telling like, and these people, they do not care about me. At least these horses are more have more feeling. I grumbled to myself. Means I'm complaining to myself. Okay, I'll go and sleep with them. He's telling, okay, I'll go and sleep with horses. The stables were warm and the food was soft. But for a time, sleep would not come. Each time I dozed, a horse would nudge me. He's telling like, I went and slept at the, uh, in, the, in the stable. But whenever I start to start sleeping, they would, the one of the horse will uh, come and nudge me. Nudge me means like poking gently, like it, it will poke. Or a sudden burst of sound from the horse would rouse me. Then otherwise, they will make some sound and he will again um, rouse from his sleep. Gradually, the noises were still. I raised myself to one elbow and looked out. The lights were one by one flickering to blackness. Means while the lights were going off, the butter lamps. Um, soon they were there was only the cold blue moonlight reflecting vividly, means clearly from the snow heaped mountains. So only the blue light was there, slowly all the lights were, went off, uh, the butter lamp lights, now only we could see the moonlight the, and everything calm, became calm. The horses slept, some on their feet and some on their sides. I too slept, poor Lopsarampa slept in the stable stable. The next morning, I was awakened by a rough shake. They were shaking someone. And why he said, come along, Tuesday Lopsang. I have to go get the horses ready. And you are in the way. So they do not have any kind of poor, like uh, uh, compassion or anything. Like he's like, even though he's sleeping in, uh, next to the horses, there isn't bother, much bother about him. So I got up and made my way into the house in search of food. There was much activity. People were preparing to leave and mother was flittering from group to group so for a last minute chat. So his mother was moving from one group to other to say bye for the guests who, are come, who are leaving. He was telling an old friend of his that he intended having glass imported. Uh, father was discussing improvements to the house 
onto the gardens. He was telling an old friend of his that he intended having glass imported from India so that our house, our house would have glazed windows. So his mother was busy at uh, uh, saying uh, last minute chats and his father was uh, uh, was busy with his friends. Now he's, he's telling about he, he can get some um, windows, uh, glass windows, glass from uh, India so that he can uh, use it in his house as a, uh, for the windows. In Tibet, there was no glass. None was made in the country and the cost of bringing it from India was very high indeed. So the cost was very high. Tibetan windows have frames upon which is stretched paper, which is highly waxed and translucent, but tra not transparent. The, I mean, it can, uh, it is translucent, translucent kind of, uh, it can get some, some kind of light, but not transparent. Outside the windows were heavy wooden shutters, not so much to keep burglars away as to prevent the ingress of grit carried by the strong winds. He's telling this wooden shutters, um, it's not for the uh, robbers or anyone to keep away, but it's just to keep these harsh winds, um, harsh winds, this grit, this dust, the harsh uh, uh, grit means dust. Sometimes it was more like small pebbles. This dust was like small pebbles, small rocks, tiny rocks, baby rocks, would tear through any unprotected windows. So it's uh, so harsh that uh, uh, because of this wind, they would come. And it would also deeply cut exposed hands and faces. And during the season of strong winds, such journeys were fraught with danger. So it would be even these pebbles with the, in, in, the, in this high, uh, if there are a very high winds or breezes that you know, the strong winds, then we are, it is not safe to go out. That is what he means like it we even cuts, cut our hands and faces. The people of Lhasa used to keep a very eye, very means cautious eye upon the peak. When it suddenly became hidden in the black haze, everyone used to dash for shelter before the whipping, blood bringing wind caught them. So before the strong wind, so everyone would go into there to go and take the shelter. But not only humans were on the alert, animals also were on the watch. And it was no unusual sight to see horses and dogs leading the humans in the rush for shelter. We all know that animals are more sensible, right? More sensitive and they can, uh, um, they can sense much more than humans. So they, they are selling like even the horse, horse, the animals would not, they would go rush for the shelter when they sense this winds. Cats were never caught in a storm and yaks were quite immune. Yaks are, um, are very quite strong though, he's telling. With the departure of the last of the guests, I was called. So after the all guests went, I was called before the father who said, so his father called the Lopsang Rampa and he said, Go to the shopping center and buy your needs. Zoo knows what is required. He said only this. Okay. I thought of the things I would need. He, he knows. He's thinking, okay, I think I know what I need in, an, uh, uh, in a Lama Seri. A Sampa bowl made of wood, a cup and a rosary. Only these things must see. Rosary means it's like beads where we do like a chanting beads. The cup would be in three parts. A stand, the cup, and it's lid. This would be of silver. He's thinking this would be, this uh, cup would be of uh, silver. He's thinking at least I can get the cup in, in silver. Uh, the rosary would be of wood with its 108 beads. How many beads will be there in this, uh, in this, ch in this uh, chanting is 108. Okay. Um, it's 108, the sacred number. It is very um, important. It's very sacred, it's in this particular number. Also indicates that the things which a monk has to remember. This, this not only, it's not only a sacred number, but also 108 things which a monk has to remember. So monk means like who always, who is dedicated to God. That is, that is what the monk is called. Okay, that is monk means it represents they always think about god they always be devoted to the god they'll not have any other any other thoughts apart from that okay 
we set off zoo on his horse and i on my pony so we started at least we went for uh, shopping he's saying along with zoo as we left the courtyard we turned right and later later turning right again was we uh, again as we left the ring road past the potala to enter the shopping center i looked about me as if seeing the town for the first time he's <laughs> poor lopsang he's saying he's telling right okay i'm thinking like i'm feeling very happy like i'm looking this town for the first time the shopping center i was greatly afraid he's also afraid why that i was seeing it for the last time so he's telling like probably this would be my last time i could i, I i'll see this shopping center why because he'll be he's going to this lama series right he, he's going uh, the shops were crowded with chauffeuring merchants um chauffeuring means like uh, the, the, um, like uh, transporting merchants i mean the car some ca the, these merchants were carrying some stuff who had just arrived in lhasa some were bringing tea from china and others had brought cloth from india we made our way through the crowd to the shops we wish to visit even every every so often zu would call out a greeting to some old friend of former years so every now and then zu knows everyone so many people so he would say hi to his friends in the in this shopping center that's what he's saying okay here with this i will stop here master it's uh, eight it's so 10 more by eight more minutes so we will discuss or we will take some feedback here okay let me stop the share okay so let me know how was the session is it was it okay do you Uh, like do you have any questions any feedback okay thanks mukon yes aradhan you can unmute yourself ma'am only today less members are came less yes, members yes what to do aradhan like only few of uh, a uh, few of them are here uh, so it's probably because of the festival i think so Uh, let's see like it's okay whoever are there we will discuss this topic and because you guys are enjoying isn't it this book yes it should not matter about how, how many kids are there it's like we want to learn so let's learn yes okay and yes. other other uh, other friends of yours will join <coughs> later yeah okay 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 do you have any questions about the today's session no okay so let me ask few questions then to see uh so what did uh, so what did the um, so, uh, okay first of all how many astrologers were there uh, i i raise your hand so that i can ask okay okay mukun yeah Two. Okay, good. Next question. So, what did um, yeah, you have to? Uh, so, whenever I call your name, you have to answer it. Okay. Next question. So, what was the? Um, so, what was the future? What did they predict about the Lopsang Rampa's future? Gautam, yes. They predict he would um, become a priest. I think. A surgeon, priest, doctor. His surgeon means a doctor, specialized uh, doctor. Surgeon. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. Well done. Now, next question is. So, so did anyone bother about uh, Lopsang Rampa that uh, after the function, where did he sleep? was he sleeping in his own room or was was he sleeping somewhere else at this time i'll give chance to aradhan he was sleeping somewhere else where was he sleeping in his own bedroom ah come on rethink rethink after the function after the function after the function 
Uh, all all the rooms were occupied by the guests. No room at all for him. She was feeling very sad that you no know, day. He slept. Where did he sleep? He slept in the stair. In the horse. In the hall. Ah yes, in the where the horses were there. He was sleeping there. Well done, Aladdin. Yeah. Next question. So, so did uh, so after the after uh, the function, what did his father uh, told to Rampa, Lopsang Rampa? Um, okay, Mukun. He told to go to the shopping center and um, bring the stuff he needs. Yes, good, 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 Mukun. Well done. Next question. Oh, what will I ask? Okay, now let's see like, um, uh, what is so? How would you think like what Lopsang Rampa would be? I mean, how would he feel? Uh, any kind of uh, like? Have, by the way, first of all, I would like to ask: Have you any one of you read this book? Read this book earlier? No. Good. So, can you um, think what what his life is going to be? How is his life is going to be? Will it be? Um, will it be hard or like what do you think? I, I, I would like to hear all of your inputs, uh, starting with Gauta. Yeah, how would you think? Like, can you predict? I mean, what how this book is going to be? I'm thinking, like, when he's grown up, he'll have a hard life at first, mm -hmm. yeah. but at the end, he will succeed, yes, in life. Oops. Good, good. Thank you, Gautam. Next comes. Welcome. Um, who was it? Mukun. Mukun. Yeah. Um, I agree with Gautam because um, also uh, the 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 astrologist said that. Yes. And he predict the future of um the prime minister. So probably he's right. Yes, yes. Let's see. Okay, interesting, right? Yeah. Uh, Aradhan, how about you? Yes, uh, Gautam said right only because uh, the you when in the starting it will be hard and at the end it would be easy. Mm, let's see. Even I'm also thinking the same. Let's come tomorrow at the same time. And let's all see what's going to happen. How is he going? How is he going to leave his home, homeland? And how is he going to Lama series? How is his, um, how his emotions will be? Let's see. Okay. Come tomorrow again at the same time. Okay. I'll meet you. I'll, I'll see you all guys okay. tomorrow at the same time. And we are bring and bring along. We'll, uh, and you can say to your friends also to join. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Are you feeling interesting? Yes, it is. Yes, you can ask your friends to join as well. Okay, if you say, your friends will also join. Okay? Okay? Bye for tonight. Bye-bye.